I have always been obsessed with naming things. If I could name them, I could know them. If I could name them, I could tame them. Like, they could be my friends. For example, I had a large collection of frogs when I was a little girl. Stuffed frogs, plastic frogs, neon frogs, china frogs, happy battery operated frogs, and each one had a name. I would take the time to get to know them before I named them. I'd set them on my bed and watch them in the sunlight, carry them around in my coat pockets, hold them in my sweaty little hands. I came to know them by their shape, their size, their sense of humor. Then they would get named, usually in a splendid naming ceremony. Surrounded by all their frog friends, I would dress them up in ceremonial coats and put sparkles on them and gold stars. I'd line them up in front of the frog chapel and name them. First, I would whisper the coveted name into its ear. You are my froggy doodle mashy pie. I would make sure the frog accepted the name. Then I would say it out loud for all the other frogs, some of whom were eagerly awaiting their own names. <clears throat> Presenting froggy doodle mashy pie. And this would be accompanied with singing, usually the name repeated over and over. Froggy doodle mashy pie, froggy doodle mashy pie. And then there would be dancing. Lining the frogs up, I would hop in and out of them, making general frog noises, ribbit, ribbit, and the like. It was an exhausting ceremony, but crucial. It would have been fine if it had been limited to frogs, but soon I needed to name everything. I named doors and chairs and rugs and stairs. Ben, for example, was my flashlight named after my kindergarten teacher who was always in my business. Eventually, I named all the parts of my body. My hands, Gladys. They seemed functional and basic, like Gladys. I named my shoulders Shorty strong and a little belligerent. My breasts were Betty. They weren't Veronica, but they weren't ugly either. Naming my down there was not so easy. It's not like naming your hands. No, it was complicated. Down there is alive and not so easy to pinpoint. No, it remained unnamed and as unnamed, he remained unknown and untamed. We had a babysitter around then. Her name was Sarah Stanley. And she would always talk in this high-pitched voice that made me want to pee. <laughs> so one night, when I was in the bath, she said to me, don't forget to wash your itsy bitsy. I can't say that I like this name. It took me a while to figure out what it even was. But there was something about her voice. The name stuck. Yep, there it is, my itsy bitsy. Unfortunately, this name followed me into adulthood. <laughs> On our first night in bed, I informed the man I would later marry that, um, Itsy Bitsy is a little shy but eager, and if he would be patient, she surely would reveal her mysteries. He was a bit freaked out, I think. <laughs> but as is his nature, he went along with it and would even call her by name. Is Itsy Bitsy there? Is she ready? <laughs> I myself never liked the name, so what happened later is not really surprising. One night, my husband and I were in the act, and he called out to her, come here, my little itsy bitsy, and she did not respond. It was as if she suddenly wasn't there. Itsy bitsy, it's me, your biggest fan. No word, no motion. So I called out to her, itsy bitsy, come on out, don't do this to me. <laughs> Not a word, not a sound. Itsy was dead and mute and gone. Itsy Bitsy! 
For days she would not come. Then weeks and months I became despondent. <sighs> Reluctantly, I told my friend Teresa, who had been spending all her time in this new women's group. I said to her, Bitsy Bitsy will not return my calls, Teresa. She won't speak to me. What are you talking about? My Itsy, I said. My Bitsy. Do you mean your vulva girl? She said in a voice that suddenly sounded much deeper than mine. Vulva. What exactly is that? It's the package, she said. It's the entire deal. Vulva. 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 I could feel something unlock. Itsy Bitsy had been wrong, all, I knew this all along. I could not see Itsy Bitsy and I did not know who or what she was. She didn't sound like an opening or a lip. Or a lip. So that night, we named her, my husband Randy and I, just like the frogs. Dressed her in sexy clothes and sparkles and laid her in front of the body chapel. We lit some candles. We whispered it at first to see if she would hear. Vulva, Vulva, are you there? There was sweetness and something definitely stirred. Vulva, Vulva, are you real? And we sang the Vulva song, which didn't involve croaking but kissing. And we danced the vulva dance, which didn't involve hopping, but leaping. And all the other body parts were lined up, Betty and Gladys and Shorty. And they were definitely listening. very much. That piece is called The Vulva Club. It's from Eve Ensler's The Vagina Monologues, which I will be performing as long as, along with several others coming up on March 6th and 7th at the Kitchen Dog Theater. I will also be doing another kind of performance at our burlesque fundraiser this Thursday at Sue Ellen's. So check us out where the DFW Vagina Monologues on Facebook and on the web. Thank you all. Yeah.